Hi, I'm Nancy McSherry Jensen. I'm the CEO of The Swing Shift. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Denwald and I run the programming and operations for The Swing Shift. And today we are going to talk a little bit more about networking, especially networking online. We've been getting a lot of questions coming in through our um, Facebook group and our website and we wanted to kind of have a platform that we can talk informally, Nancy and I, and you guys can get our opinions on what we think would be the best route for networking right now. That's right. And we have so many opinions. We really want to share them. Yes. Yes, we do. So yeah, we're going to start off with one question that we keep getting is, how do we reach out to old contacts during this time? Maybe it's that person that you worked with 10 plus years ago in a prior job. Maybe it's someone that you've done a community volunteer project with. How do you, after not talking to them for a couple years or more, how do you reach out to them without it feeling awkward? Nancy, I'll let you start. Yeah, that and Sarah, and I think this is a very pertinent question. I think a lot of people, um, especially in this time where we're all at home, are using this time to reach back and to reach out to folks that maybe they haven't been in contact with for a while. Um, and I think it's a lot of it is context, right? So if it's somebody that you've worked with in the past, so it's someone that is a former peer, or maybe they're your manager, or maybe you were their manager, and you haven't talked in a while, I think it's perfectly natural to reach out and say, hey, I haven't talked in a while, maybe a long while, just wondering how you're doing. I wanted to let you know that I'm probably going to be looking for a job as things ease up after this public health crisis, or maybe in, you know, in the middle of this public health crisis. And just wanted to get on your radar and um, let me know if you'd like to talk or, you know, you, what you want to do is use your natural common connection of working together. It is totally okay to say, yeah, I'm looking for a job or I'm going to be looking for a job. And, you know, then think about what you want, you know, to ask this person. Do you want to ask them for a reference? Do you want to talk to them about what it is you're do they're doing that you might want to do? Um, so think a little bit about that. But it's a very natural occurrence. And people are almost always thrilled to hear from you. I just got contacted by my old manager at IBC, and that was almost 30 years ago. And I have to tell you, I was delighted to hear from him. Yeah, I think you touch on a good point, Nancy. This, there's different ways that you go about contacting the people in your network. And for older contacts, people that you've worked with, you can be open and say, I'm looking for a job um, right. and just let them know that. That's not always the case. And we'll go into that in, um, in a couple minutes. But I would add on to that as well. If you feel like you need a reason beyond just telling them that you're looking to sit down with them, I would say, hey, I'm revamping my LinkedIn, my resume, some of the details on things that we worked with, I'd love to walk through with you and just, can you remind me of some of those projects that we worked on? Or remind me about what were the things that you came to me for? What did you feel like I was good at? Um, those are the kind of um, details that you're looking for and that's what you can also use as your lead in to reach out to those people as well. I think that's a good point, Sarah. Uh, many of us, particularly if you're going, you know, 10, 15, even 20 years back, you forget what it was that made you a rock star to begin with. But these people remember. And so in addition to having the, the catch-up conversation, you can also say, hey, can you remind me what it was that we did here? And, and, and it's very valid. They may ask you too. So, you know, People in general, if you've worked together and you've had a decent relationship, they're almost always going to be delighted to hear from you. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Sarah, I have a, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, we, I know we get a lot of questions about cold calls, right? How, when you know that there's somebody in a position that perhaps you would like to be in, or maybe somebody who's hiring, but you don't know them, how do you go about approaching them? Do you, and do you have any perspectives on this? Yes. So good question. So we started off talking about those contacts that were in the past for you that you're connected with. And now we're talking about networking with people that you haven't met yet, but in roles or industries or jobs that you admire, that you want to learn more about, that potentially you want someday, or at least you want to see if that's where you want to be someday. It depends on where you're at in your career path. 
So the best way to go about this right now is it's a little bit different than normal. Normally, pre-COVID or hopefully post-COVID at some point in the right. you know next six months, you're going to be able to attend some in-person events. A lot of times, if you're an introvert, this may be harder, but it is a lot easier to make connections in person and you're going for a reason. So you want to go attend those um, industry events, associations. You want to see who are the key players, who's talking, who's on the panels, who's running the show, who's in charge of that meeting, right? What is that committee that's in charge of that meeting? Those are the types of people that you want to meet, right? So now pre-COVID, we're not really going to a lot of those meetings and that's okay. The great part about this time is a lot of people seem to have a little bit more time and bandwidth to have those one-off 15-minute 15 co 15 conversations with you. So you want to change your mindset. How we talked about when you're connecting with old contacts and you want to, you're, you're essentially flat out telling them, I'm looking for a job. This is what I'm looking for. With these people, you want to think of it more as you're gathering information. You're not just connecting with these people to say, hey, I need a job. I'm looking for a job. I'd love your job. Can you tell me more about it? <laughs> Don't want to do that. On? <laughs> exactly. It kind of just puts people, it's, it's a little bit awkward, especially if right. they aren't in a position to help you, then it makes them feel right. bad, right? And so you want to change your mindset into, I am here to learn more. I am here to ask questions. I am not here to ask for a job. That is not even part of the garden that you're growing at this point, right? The garden is about the relationships that you're building. So what you want to do, if there is someone that you have been looking on LinkedIn, you're like, I admire her career path. How did she either get where she is? All these questions that are going through your head, those are the questions that you can ask them. You reach out and say, I know you don't know me, but I came across your profile. You're in the indus exact industry that I want to be in. Um, you had a career change or you've been in this industry, I'd love to hear how it's changed in the last five years, or where do you think it's going in the next five years? Or I'm making a career change into this industry, I'd love to talk with you about, do I need to get a, a, another credential, or do I need a little bit more training in this area, or do I have the experience? What are the top traits of candidates that you see that are successful in this job? All of those questions, are the ones that you want to write down. And those are the types of things you want to be reaching out to when you're talking to these people. And Sarah, I think one thing that you mentioned that I think is really important is what's the common thread that you have with this other person, right? Do you have mm -hmm. a friend in common? Are you both part of an industry group? Um, do, are you part of a bigger book group? I know there's a lot of book groups going on right now. So think about, you know, what it is that you've got in common um, and, and then use that, um, you know, so like use that thread and sew that cloth. Can you tell I've been doing some sewing? Yeah. Um, but you want to you use that as a way to put that together. And I think one other thing that you mentioned that I think is very important, these are relationships. And relationships don't happen overnight, right? You, you have to put a little bit of time and effort into them. Um, the good news, and you, you totally hit the nail on the head on this, people are a little more open to talking online right now. They have um, a little more leeway in terms of structuring their schedules. And so that's good news, especially when you're looking to reach somebody that is new to you. Yeah, one thing I want to add as well, um, you know, it could be a little bit harder to find these people if you're not going to these in-person events, but there are a lot of events happening. So look at those industry associations. Have they changed to online events? Um, go and do a search. Ask, you know, the swing shift. If you have questions and you're wondering where you should be, what, who you should be talking to, we can help you with that as well. Right. Um, but what what you reminded me of, Nancy, is when you do reach out, be very specific with your ask. So we, um, we don't want you to just say, hey, can I pick your brain for 15 minutes? Or I'd love to have a conversation for 15 minutes. Because what happens is 
people don't see value in that. And so that goes lower on their priority list. And they're like, well, how do I know if I can help this person? If I can't help this person, it's not worth my time, right? right. Or they feel that way. So what you want to do is you want to be very clear and you want to maybe have three things. You're like, I'd love to ask you these three questions. These are the questions. And then when that person looks at that, you're like, oh, I can answer those questions. That's no problem. Sure. Right. So they already feel this sense of, I can help this person. So it's, it's of value to me. Um, right. And I think that is a really important because the, the picking your brain, you know, intro and all of that, it's just, it's, it, there's too much going on right now to um, lead with that. I, yeah. And one thing, be respectful of their time as mm -hmm. someone who gets a lot of these calls. There is nothing I love hearing more than somebody saying, we're at 15 minutes and I would love to talk with you more, but I, I have taken enough of your time right now. And that gives it, that puts it into the contact court where they can say, no, actually, I would love to talk with you for 10 or 15 minutes more. Or they can say, oh yeah, thank you so much, but I'd love to stay in touch. And at the end, have some sort of, we say an ask, right? And again, we're not saying ask for a job, but you can say, you know what? I enjoy this conversation so much. Um, is there anyone else you think that I should talk to or you think that I should reach out to to get more information from? Because then they can send an email to that person and do an introduction to you. And potentially that can help your stepping stones into your next network. Yep. So we've done old contacts, people that you don't know yet. So Nancy, what are your thoughts on, you are connected to someone already on LinkedIn and you want to reach out to them, but you don't really have a reason. You know, how do you keep the, that networking going with one person? How do you, how would you do that? Well, and I think, um, hitting the common thread is always the way to go, right? Think a little bit about, well, what do we have in common? Do we have a mutual friend who perhaps something has happened with their life or career where you can weigh in and say, Hey, um, I just, you know, I just heard Ellie had a, a move over at her job and I was so happy to hear about that. How are things going with you? And you want, and that's, that's one that just popped into my mind. But you want to think a little bit about what's something going on that potentially would be mutually interesting to both of you. Um, and then you do want to be considerate of the person's time. You know, if they're working at an organization where they're in full-blown scramble because of what's happening currently or what's happening in their industry, probably not a good time to hit them up. Right. But if it's somebody who, you know, potentially is going to be in a hiring position or they're maybe job, totally appropriate to say, hey, just checking in. Um, how are things going with you? Has it affected how things are going with your job? Asking questions is always a great way to go, but be focused about it. Yeah. And I want to touch on that common thread piece, too, you know. Yeah. Again, you can just reach out to someone cold. The expectation that you'll get an answer back is a lot lower, but right. a common thread can be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be a first connection. It can be a second connection. It can be a third connection. You wanna look at your connections on LinkedIn and see who are they connected to that you know. It might not be within your network. It would be within a friend's network. You know, again, like right. Nancy said, maybe you're a member of the same industry association, maybe you went to the same college. Um, there's right. so many different, you maybe you've worked at the same company in the past. Maybe you were a Microsoft alum or an Amazon alum, or there's so many, or you volunteered at the same organization right. in the past, maybe at different times, but you had some commonality, but those threads can be far reaching and you can use those, but don't be afraid to use those because it is a common thread and everything counts. <laughs> and you know, it's so these things are unexpected. Um, for example, Sarah Haggard, who spoke at our, one of our hangout habits a couple of weeks ago, it turns out that one of her mentors is very good friends with my mother-in-law. 
we didn't know that when I first met her and reached out to her. It was one of those things that came up as part of the conversation. You know, where she runs a mentoring company, Swing Shift works with people in transition and we're looking to shift roles and careers and come back. And it just happened to come up in the conversation. But it's a funny thing because we did have this common interest. These other commonalities popped up as a result. Yep. That's so funny. It happens in the in the most unexpected places. It really does. Yeah. So the last part that I want to talk about before we wrap this up is about cultivating your online network. And really LinkedIn is where it's going to be. You know, you can use other social media platforms if you are already engaged on Twitter. Um, definitely be following those, following those people that you admire. Showcase your opinions on industry-related articles and events happening. Same as Instagram, same as Facebook. It's going to depend what industry you're in. And if the people that you are wanting to learn from and wanting to network, you got to make sure they're on those platforms, right? If right. they're not, then you want to use LinkedIn. Um, what you, a good rule of thumb is just start engaging. And what I mean by engaging is when you're connected to people, you want to follow what they have to say. You want to like their posts. You want to weigh in on maybe they had an opinion or maybe they, uh, an opinion on an article and maybe you agree, maybe you don't. Um, maybe you have something to add to that. Uh, don't be afraid. I was talking to a woman a few days ago that said, you know, she, she's a Harvard educated lawyer. She um, was a director level in um, legal compliance and she's in transition right now. And I said, don't be afraid to, you know, post articles that you think are interesting and relevant. And, you know, she's, Fabulous. She's a fabulous, has a fabulous personality. And she was hesitant and said, I, but I, I don't feel like I'm an expert in anything. And I, and I was like, first of all, she probably is, even though she may not feel like that, but she does, she is entitled to an opinion, right? Everyone can have an opinion, an educated opinion. And so I said, you know what, you don't have to be an expert and you don't need to feel like you are, but you can have an opinion on what's happening out there and you can voice that right? Obviously within boundaries of the professional setting. Um, but, and you can also be interested in things. You don't have to just be opposing or, you know, challenging things. You can also say, this is really interesting. And I a hundred percent agree with what this person has to say. I encourage you, if you are in, in this role or looking for this type of job, you should read this, right? Whatever it may be, just start being active. And if it needs to be starting with liking things and following people, that's okay too, right? You'll start building up to maybe at some point you'll be writing small blog posts and sharing those, um, whatever it may be. But these are the way that you're building your brand, but you're also networking as well. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's okay if it's not directly applicable to the role or the industry that you're looking for. Um, I'll use myself as an example. I follow the retail industry very, very closely. You know, we're not in retail at the swing shift. We're probably not going to be in retail, but I'm very, very interested in the industry and the trends. It's in huge transition right now. Um, and so things will come up. I do see analogies of what's happening um, in other industries. And so I might read or post on something like that. And it's fascinating to see who weighs in. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I think what it shows is that you've got um, a diverse set of interests and that you're thoughtful. And Sarah, you're right. It's okay to like something and it's okay to repost. It's okay to say, I found this to be a very thoughtful analysis of subject X. That's just as valid as writing a blog post. Absolutely. And most importantly, you're doing this because it is putting you at the top of the algorithm, right? right. So, and maybe not the top that that may not make much sense. But what I mean is you're putting yourself at the top of people's feeds because the whole point of networking is to stay top of mind for them. Right? right. And so you are making sure that you are staying relevant by being around, you know, you're not being, you're not posting four times a day. You're posting maybe once a day, maybe a couple times a week. Um, but you're, you're staying relevant and you're staying in people's feeds. And that is what is most important. And even if you comment on something that has thousands of posts, 
your comment is actually what is going to show up for the people in your network. That's right? right. So don't think that just because there's thousands of comments, it's not worth your time because the people in your network will see that. And again, you're becoming top of mind for them. That's right. So I think that covers what we wanted to talk about today. We talked about how do you connect with old contacts? And if that's okay, short answer, absolutely. Yes. Um, how do you connect with cold contacts? Um, using a common, a commonality, a common thread, whatever that may be. There's a lot of different ways out there to do that. Um, if you don't have a common thread and you've exhausted all of your network, try a cold email and reach out and just say, you know what, I'm interested in you. I'm interested in your work. I'm interested in how you got where you are. People do like to talk about themselves and they, if they feel like they're gonna help someone and bring them up, then it's worth a try. They might say yes. And I would say more often or not, they will say yes. So if you don't have a common thread, still reach out to those contacts. And then cultivating your network on LinkedIn. And that is just trying to really engage with them on what they have to say. I think that's it. I have nothing to add because Sarah, you've really <laughs> summed it up beautifully. So, awesome. Um, thank you for, so thanks for checking us out. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll be back with more videos. Yes, thanks everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.